Good morning. And thank you for enjoying it with a six pack. The Scotty six pack. It feels good to say it. The only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you. Once again, six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. You can listen to this podcast on your podcast platform of choice. That's Apple, Spotify, anywhere. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. Good to see you all. We got through the doldrums. I guess we're not quite through the doldrums. You get post NFL draft. Baseball season begins. Hey, and I got no complaints about baseball taking center stage. But the Bucks didn't go much of anywhere. I've been to <laughs> double digit number of major league baseball games already this season. And that's been good. But now that we are June 18th, we're we're kind of getting through the summer. Fall camp for Badger football, training camp for the Green Bay Packers. It's gonna sneak up on us really quickly. So we are here. We make the return to the feed, your regularly scheduled programming. We'll talk about what's what's coming up around the bend. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about why we're returning now at the end of the show. But I want to talk about the big, come on, you know we were going to do it big in the first show back. We're not going to do anything but Badger basketball because what else would I would I want to do? Yes, I have the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers jersey on again. They just clinched the West Division on Sunday, heading back to the playoffs for the first time in a number of years. Good for the Timber Rattlers, the Milwaukee Brewers, single-A affiliate. But Wisconsin basketball, we got a report. We got a solid report about who Wisconsin is going to tip off its season against. It's Rocco Miller reporting that Wisconsin will meet to start the 24-25 college basketball season on Monday, November 4th, when you're listening to this today on Tuesday, June 18th. That is 139 days away, kicking off the season inside the Kohl Center against the Crusaders of Holy Cross. Now I want to talk a little bit about why Opening against Holy Cross is interesting. What we might see from Holy Cross and why it is important to play an opponent like Holy Cross early. It's a season opener. Most of these teams, Big Ten teams, Big 12 teams, are going to open their seasons in college basketball against lesser qual quality teams. You know, mid majors, buy games, and it's a tune up before you lead into some of these, you know, non conference early season matchups. We had the Big East, you know, Big Ten Gavit games for a long time. Wisconsin is going to play in the holiday tournament in the Greenbrier Classic. Plenty of reporting out there about other non conference games like playing Butler in Indianapolis playing Stanford in San Jose in a bit of a return trip from when Stanford came to Wisconsin to play inside a baseball stadium at uh, American Family Field against the Wisconsin Badgers. But playing Holy Cross is going to be important for a, a Wisconsin Badgers basketball team that is going to look very different from a year ago. This roster is filled out, filled out in a way that I think I'm pleasantly surprised by. I think Greg Gard was able to put together. Granted, the last time I talked about Wisconsin basketball in this program, I was very skeptical about Greg Gard's ability to put together a, a team that was of high enough quality to allow Greg Gard to then achieve what he would need to achieve this upcoming season 
to keep his job come April of 2025. I'm still a little skeptical, but given the circumstances, I think Greg Gard has put together an excellent roster. And we'll talk about each one of those pieces individually more as we get closer to college basketball season actually starting. Because I'm sure right now on June 18th, Yo, you know, not everybody here wants to hear me break down the intricacies of the Wisconsin Badgers basketball schedule, or sorry, the Wisconsin Badgers basketball roster. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about this weird intricacy of playing Holy Cross. But given that there is going to be four new starters, because AJ Store is gone, Chucky Hepburn is gone, Tyler Wall is gone. Your remaining two starters are Max Klesmet and Stephen Crowell. There's a chance Max Klesmet could get moved to the bench. I think that's a real possibility. Maybe John Blackwell takes that role. I, I have said for a long time that he could be the leading scorer on this team. But now with the other pieces coming in, too, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily the case, but at minimum, you're going to have three new starters on this team. Being able to mesh early against an opponent that maybe you don't know exactly what they're going to throw at you, but you know that you should be able to handle it is good. An early game like this for learning purposes is going to be important for this group. And playing a not cookie cutter opponent, despite the fact that it is a lesser opponent is important. And I think that's exactly why Greg guard went out and wanted to schedule Holy cross. Holy cross of the Patriot league. Finished last year poorly with a 10 and 23 record, 349th in the country, according to Ken Palm. A rough year. <laughs> they got an early win over Georgetown in Ed Cooley's first year there. Um, but other than that, not, 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 not. A lot going on of those 10 wins. You know, one of them was over a team not even in Division One. A couple of those wins over other sub 300 Ken Palm teams. Not the most outstanding resume, but it's a roster that largely is sticking together from what I can find. Obviously, it being Holy Cross, it's not a team that I was able to find a ton of super great reporting on. Um, and I am sorry, I'm not plugged in in Holy Cross basketball circles, but they keep a lot of folks together. They bring in the Juco transfer. They bring, bring in another transfer from Rice, bring in a few freshman recruiting class pieces, and they're going to have to replace, you know, their, their best player, in Joe Octave, but fortunately you have Caleb Kenny who will be a very solid starter down low at the forward position for them. If you know, an undersized one at that, it's about all I know about Holy cross for, for as much as I tout my, you know, college basketball sicko status. It's, it's not a team I'm intimately familiar with, but part of the reason I don't know a ton about Holy Cross seems to be by design. Dave Polson, the head coach of Holy Cross heading into his second year in Worcester, Massachusetts, leading the Crusaders. If you go and look at his record, because he starts his career as head coach, also in the Patriot league with Bucknell coaches very well. He's able to parlay that into a job at Georgetown. Now he's headed into his second season with Holy Cross. If you just glance at his year over year numbers, you know, assist percentages, two point to three point shooting, 
defensive statistics, defensive efficiency, offensive efficiency. It's not like any of his teams have a very clear through line for any statistic. If, if you look at Wisconsin basketball, you know, Greg, Greg Gard, Bo Ryan, those teams always have kind of the same hallmarks, right? Low turnover percentage, fairly high assist percentage, low offensive rebound percentage, high defensive rebound percentage, you know, middling to good offense, excellent defense. You can't find those same definitive trends in Dave Paulson's coaching record. So when I talk about Wisconsin wanting to play an opponent that it doesn't necessarily know what it's going to get, it will have to think about a little bit rather than just imposing its will of what should be superior athleticism because Wisconsin should have superior athletes to Holy Cross, a very, very small Patriot League school. For whatever you think about the athletes coming in to this Wisconsin basketball team, they, they come from programs that should be producing better talent than Holy Cross. Wisconsin will have to think a little bit about what Holy Cross is throwing at them, I think. Without me knowing a ton about Dave Paulson's scheme, I, I believe that to be true. And Dave Paulson's not exactly a slouch in terms of his coaching record. He can coach some teams up. I mean, he was able to parlay that job at Bucknell in the Patriot League to an Atlantic 10 job at George Mason. Part of that was, you know, coaching a team to an 11 seed in the NCAA tournament in, in 2011 or 2013, rather. He had two NCAA tournament appearances. The other one was in 2011 as a 13 seed. When they were an 11 seed at George Mason, was that, are they the Patriots? What is the Georgia? Because I, I now I am like, did he go from the Patriot League to a team called the Patriots? Yeah, is it the George Mason Patriots? Fascinating. Um, that, that 2013 team was led on the back by Mike Muscala, who then became a, a, a still a very long time NBA player. Uh, very, very, very good, you know, top 10 player in college basketball that season. So th there is some discounting to that, but you got that guy to come in and you developed him through recruiting him to Bucknell. Also, Dave Paulson's high watermark for wins as a head coach at George Mason was his second season. Dave Paulson before this gig with the Holy Cross Crusaders was an assistant at Fordham, also in the Patriot League, and led, didn't lead, but was part of the coaching staff that led Fordham to a Patriot League title. Dave Paulson has a record of success at these Patriot League programs. So not necessarily a slouch. And someone that will be excited to come in to Wisconsin and hungry to get a win because he's a Wausau native. Something I had to do a little bit of digging to find. <laughs> um, doesn't have, you know, was coaching experience in Wisconsin. He played college basketball out east he got his coaching start out east he was an assistant at michigan for a hot second but most of his coaching chops are are drawn you know in in the on the atlantic coast still will be interesting to see him come back to wisconsin whatever that means for him this guy with pedigree in the patriot league Went to two different Division Three Final Fours, won a Division NCAA Division Three national title. There, there's you know un, an understanding of the game of basketball there that I think is good to bring that guy in into the Cole Center and, and compete against him. If you're a Wisconsin basketball fan, is something that 
it intrigues me. I I will be you know, selfishly, you know, th there's not an I in team, but there is one in media as well as in me. I will be intrigued to ask ask some questions to Dave Paulson and, and and try to pick his brain, you know, about ball, about his team a little bit when presumably I go to cover this game in, in November uh, in, in some capacity. Or, you know, at the very least, watch the recording of those uh, post-game pressers. I'll be, I'll be interested to listen to Dave Paulson's comments. And so if Greg Gard is going to you know, try to mesh this team early. Try to get them where they need to go so that Greg Gard stays the coach of the Wisconsin Badgers men's basketball team after April 2025. Scheduling opponents like Holy Cross, although still, you know, a lesser opponent, but one that is maybe a little bit more of a challenge than some of these other ones that generally the sub-300 Ken Palm teams, you know, tend to be. That's good. That's good for this team that needs to learn together, that needs to grow together, and should at least have to do a little bit of mental work up against a program that doesn't have a hallmark style, a coach that doesn't appear to have a hallmark style, but a coach that has a penchant for success at programs like Holy Cross. It's a good way to start the season. And maybe I am just too optimistic because it is June 18th and I'm trying to find uh, exciting ways to talk about college basketball. <laughs> um, but that, that's why I think it, it an opponent like Holy Cross is important for Wisconsin to play. Uh, one other little bit of interesting college basketball scheduling news for, for the state of Wisconsin is that Bart Lundy, the head coach of the Milwaukee Panthers. Uh, it's kind of hinting at a potential Milwaukee Panthers game in Pfizer forum on the website, formerly known as Twitter yesterday. He said that in, in response to someone asking him if the, you know, non-conference schedule for the Milwaukee Panthers is done yet for their men's basketball team. Coach Bart Lundy's response was no, but just so you know, we are working on something local, not a game at the K where Milwaukee plays a handful of games every year and also not a game at Panther arena, something there. So I wonder if they're working on putting together some game at Pfizer forum. You know, is that a, is that a game against Marquette? I kind of doubt it. Um, but that's where Marquette plays their home games. There, there's a chance that there's something going on uh, with Milwaukee Panthers basketball. That'll be interesting to watch. Um, before we wrap up, let, let's talk about the the Scotty Six Pack returns. We we are we are here. I am I am excited that we are here, and I, I kind of alluded to this at, at the top of the show, but now we'll, we'll be able to cover Wisconsin Badgers football fall camp. Um. Talking a little bit of Brewers down the stretch here. Down the stretch, not even the all-star break yet, which also went went back. Uh had some, you know, takes about the Brewers. <laughs> Maybe Chief among them was I do not expect them to contend this season for the NL Central. Well, so far the NL Central doesn't look contentious, but that's because uh the Brewers are running away with it a little bit. Um but but we're here and, and now felt like a good time to get back to it. Uh, th things you can't see but are are helping me with with this show are uh, some some big technology revamps uh, on my end, hardware, a little bit of of software, mostly the hardware piece more than anything. Uh, really helping to to produce this show at, at a little bit of a higher level and and what that might look like. You know, some of that might be. Hard to tell uh, on your end at times, but helps cut down on the work time on my end, uh, which will be really exciting. And and all of that is you know only thanks to all of all of your listenership uh, and and the support uh, to to put things like that together. So I really appreciate that uh, and all, all the support folks give the show. 
Um, as you all know, I, I still travel pretty regularly. If that's, you know, during basketball season, not during basketball season, four games, not four games. Um, but this, this will probably be the only show right now for a little bit in, in this background as I, as I hit the road a little bit for the summer, uh, beginning later today. Uh, but fortunately I have a, a much improved, um, mobile travel workstation also put together, uh, that, that I'm really excited about, really excited to start using a little bit more as well. Um, but we, we are all set to go forward through the summer. And then <laughs> I foolishly tried to squeeze, uh, one last vacation, um, something, you know, just, just for relaxing with, with myself and, and the better half, uh, as we do a lot of, you know, travel that isn't going to be necessarily relaxing this summer, um, for reasons, but try to squeeze one last vacation in at the tail end of August, just before the football season opener. And, uh, looks like that schedule has gotten a little up, up in the air. So hopefully there's not a, a small interruption right at the beginning of, of football season for you all, at least, uh, not at the beginning of Badger football season. If that appears to be the case, uh, hoping to get some, some guest host coverage on this show with maybe some people that, uh, Longtime listeners of the program already know, uh, have already listened to on this show. Um, but I'm really excited to be back, really excited to put some more, you know, work into here, work into the written uh, portion uh, of my gig on the site, badgernotes.com. Um, you can always find my latest work over there, linked in the podcast description. I'm excited to be back. I, I know I've said that a handful of times now, but I am. And... We'll be back with you all tomorrow. But if you want to hear from me before then, you can follow me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus. You can also follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports while you're here listening on your podcast platform of choice, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts. Please leave us a review, five stars, kind comments. Really does help the show. Really helps us to make upgrades to our setup that makes editing this show, producing this show a heck of a lot easier because I do all of that myself. Um, you can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack. It's been the Scotty six pack podcast. I've been your host, Kedrick Stumbrus on Wisconsin. <laughs>